on out. When I found out that you were with us, I ran up to your booth. I talked to Sarah on your team. I said, you're here. You must come and share. You must come and share. So please take a seat. Thank you. And uh, let's talk a bit about the metaverse together. Yes, please. So maybe you could start by introducing yourself and uh, the layer one blockchain that your team has been developing. Of course, with pleasure. So my name is Marjorie Hernandez, I'm the co-founder of two ventures. The first one is Luxo. Um, me and my co-founder, Fabian Fogesteller, we started in 2017 um, with the vision of bringing blockchain outside of the finance world, which was the main conversation back then, and into bringing it into power the new creative economies, how we call it in a white paper, and basically taking, you know, bring, bringing all of the tools and applications required for creators to enter the blockchain space. So that was our mission then, and it's still our mission today, and obviously we are big fans of dematerialization of, of goods in general. So we believe the future is basically on tangible products that exist in a virtual environment. So it's one of our key focuses at, at Luxo. And if people want to explore Luxo, yeah. what is a good starting point for them to understand uh, why your team has created this new layer one blockchain yeah. and the significance of it? Because um, for those that don't know, I helped co-produce a event called NFT NYC. Yeah which is, we had like 5,500 people come out to our event in November in Times Square. It's like 10,000 people that came out for it in total. Yeah. Um, and I never have seen a crowd <laughs> respond with hunger. Yes. <laughs> like they respond <laughs> to your husband when he was speaking. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, one of the guys threatened our MC that if they took him off the stage, that he'd beat him up. I mean, yeah. there's a real hunger for I people was, to understand well, everything. I, so why don't you tell us where's the start if well, people don't I, know about yeah, it? Yeah, well, I was about to, to tackle that guy as well <laughs> because he, he, he didn't know what he was doing. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah, the hunger comes from uh, Fabian and I, we co-founded Luxo and we met many, many years ago when we were both students in Germany studying design. Um, and he, in one point in time in 2015, he joined this little project called the Ethereum Foundation. <laughs> and he was one of the first people to join the project and did some really amazing things back then, um, like building the first decentralized browser and uh, proposing the ERC20 token standard, which is the standard behind all tokens. So that was pretty major stuff. And, you know, for both of us, um, you know, our background is, is in design. We are very passionate about product in general. And then when we see technology, we always think about how can we make it accessible for people. And this is something that, you know, Fabian was doing back then with Ethereum. There was basically, he was the interface between those hardcore, you know, uh, cryptographers and, you know, uh, C++ developers, et cetera, between them and web developers. So his job at them was interfacing and translating and making things accessible for other developers. Yeah. And our, our mission now with Luxo is to basically follow that same mission, but with the creative industries in mind, yeah. by like a lot of like 3D artists, designers, et cetera, who are in some ways technical and are passionate about technology and want to participate in that in the virtual economy, but they are not having the skills of necessarily deploying their own smart contracts. So we definitely wanted to make it accessible for them. Now, you speak three languages on a daily basis. Yes, I do. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so Spanish, German, and English. Yes. And so one of the things that you and I discuss, because the session is voice in the metaverse, yeah is you obviously face different frustrations yeah. <laughs> than most of us in the room. Most of us probably speak English, and we just talk to our voice device in one language. It speaks back to us in one language. It's a completely different element for you, yeah. which I believe gives you a keen insight yeah. into some of the challenges that voice technology and metaverse development will face yeah. when we start to roll this out across the two-thirds world that are more impoverished than the third of the world. Yeah. And so can you talk a bit about the challenge with voice technology, why it's a bit exhausting to you, <laughs> and if you think there might be some solutions that the voice tech industry should be mindful of? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think obviously because most of the development is done in the US. These technologies work really well for the, for the English, English language and for native uh, English speakers. But, you know, for example, in our office in Berlin, there are so many different languages, like there's Serbian, Polish, Spanish, English, German, and I'm missing somebody for sure. So there are so many languages in one place, right? And for example, we have our Siri in our office to power our music. And it's always a challenge when, for example, I want to show a Spanish song to my Polish team. And 
and I have to talk to a device in English and try to pronounce the name of the song in a way an American person will pronounce it so the device can understand it. So I think, you know, we definitely, I mean, in, in the places I mostly hang out with people with, everybody speaks multiple languages and that's definitely a challenge for, for voice recognition technology. And also if you think about the type of social environments that we will be in the metaverse, which are agnostic to any geopolitical location, um, you will be dealing with more than one language at once. And also people like me who have English as a second or third language, um, we speak a slightly different, a different type of English. It's not, it's not the same. So it's uh, definitely, there's, there's something to be done in that, in that end. There's so many questions I want to ask you. <laughs> um, so let me pause and not hit you with another question. Let me say this. What are you feeling most concerned about in layer one blockchains that the metaverse, the open metaverse, the decentralized metaverses will be dependent upon? Mm -hmm. So when you look at the survey of all the layer one blockchains, those that have already done mainnet, those like yours that are testnet, what is a concern? And then we'll get to some positive elements that you're excited about. But talk to me about some concerns over these foundational layer one blockchains that all the other layer two blockchains are built upon. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think, I think the metaverse only exists as an open metaverse. Everything that is not an open metaverse, I it's think, not is, a real is, metaverse. Not the, is not the real metaverse. Um, so I think that's the first thing. But I think um, the biggest challenge that we face, I think, is the, industry, the blockchain industry at large in terms of adoption is the issue around identity. And it's not the identity in terms of your hard identity, like the fact that you are. American and that I'm Venezuelan German, like there, it's not about that identity, but it's basically the identity that we curate and create in a digital environment. And right now in blockchains, what we have is addresses and wallets, and that's not the way we humans communicate. So one of the things that Fabian and I identified many years ago, even prior to Luxo, was the absence of having a proper profile that looks and feel like a Web2 profile, but it has all of the power of a Web3 uh, application. So basically that profile should be 100% uh, platform agnostic, it should be application agnostic, and it should be 100% under control of the user. And that profile should give you access to different environments within the metaverse or the internet or whatever you wanna call it. But that, that starting point is super, super important. And you know, we all have different parts of ourselves, like there's a part of me that is a gamer, there's a part of me that is into fashion, and you know, like we all have these different interests, so we can create all of those different identities in, in the metaverse and in any digital environment. And, but at the end, they all should come back to us and should be 100% under our control. And the identity is so important because when we're talking about digital goods and digital assets, the value of the goods is 100% related to who is the creator. So the ability of identifying the creator, who is, what is the source of that product is super, super important. Even more like in, in real life products because real life products we can touch and see them and we can judge the craftsmanship but in digital environments it's definitely who is the author is paramount to the value. Yeah. yeah. To Talk about the blockchains and the decentralized web yeah. and the thing that you're most excited about. Mm -hmm. What is standing out above the rest? Is it fashion? Is it NFTs? Is it like what, what to you is really saying this is the part that makes my heart sing? Yeah. Well, I think in general, I'm very excited about culture in general, but I think, you know, the part that makes me very excited about blockchain technology is the part that we know the accessibility to the tools like Luxus through and through the universal profiles, it can really create a paradigm shift in the terms of powers in the creative industries that is very similar to what happened with social media and the publishing houses, for example, that all of a sudden anybody could be a broadcaster. Yeah. Anybody could be a curator. So I think all of a sudden we created tools that can give access to pretty much anybody to enter a market, mm -hmm. um, you know, independently if they're in a country with a complex political environment and a banking system that is corrupt. You know, all of a sudden you can enter and, you know, monetize your work in crypto. And I do think, honestly, the biggest brands of the future and the biggest creator of the future might be people that right now is 11 years old in places that we don't imagine. So I'm really excited when girls in Ethiopia, boys in Rio de Janeiro, and everybody you know, around all of those places gain access to technology in the same way. So I think we're missing a lot of talent, and the talent all of a sudden is going to have access. I think we are going to have a lot of like a massive explosion of incredible products coming into the market. I so that makes that. me really excited. Well, you have an 11-year-old. 
Yes, I And do. your child is very fortunate to have you and your husband as parents. Oh. Oh. I think a lot of people in the world look to the two of you as parents of the metaverse, <laughs> as parents of decentralized tech and where it's going. Yeah. And so we thank you for the way that you've developed things, the way you steward things. And there's a reason why people honor the two of you so much. You so and there's a reason why I honor you. And thank you so much for last second. I just saw you today. I said, <laughs> please come and join me. And thank, thank you, you for coming you. up and having this conversation. Thank you so much, Ian. Well, I, I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity. And also, I mean, about Joshua, our son, we learn from him every day. Like, he has a built-in bullshit detector. He, <laughs> and nobody can sell him anything that has no intrinsic value. He understands digital assets per se. He asks me daily how many ether does he own. Like, you know, he is he's, um, very aware. And you know, for Fabian and I, it's, it's like uh, our best, you know, kind of like source of inspiration. We bounce a lot of ideas with him. So he calls himself the secret Luxo advisor, <laughs> which he definitely is. So, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Well, let, let's give a hand for you and your son. And thank you. Joshua, thank you thank so you. much for coming thank up you, yeah. and for so joining nice. me. Cool. <laughs>